Welcome everybody to our coffee break with the Saskatoon Council on Aging. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation, Budgets with Bruce. For guests who may be new to the Saskatoon Council on Aging, we offer many services. We have information, referrals, resources of interest to older adults, free monthly social programs, a Seniors Neighborhood Hub Club, lifelong learning, telephone buddy program, seniors mastering technology. We have a century club for seniors that are 90 years and older, a globe walk program, which we have just completed to keep you active during the winter months. We have free directory of services and activities for older adults, caregiver information and support services, monthly newsletters to keep you informed. We identify and act on unmet needs of older adults. We support older adults to lead healthy, independent lives and to be active and socially engaged. So call us anytime at 306-652-2255 to find out more. Now, if you have any questions during this webinar, please click on your chat icon. It's at the, usually at the bottom of your screen, or if you're using an iPad, it might be at the top. Type your questions in the chat box. And what we'll do is after Bruce has done his presentation, we will look at all the questions and we will answer them for you. Now, if you're having any problems, like you can't hear me or you can't, if you need technical support, please call 306-361-3805. So now I would like to welcome our presenter for today, Bruce Irvine. Bruce is currently the treasurer of the Saskatoon Council on Aging Board of Directors. Bruce was born in Regina, but he has lived most of his life in Saskatoon. He holds following degrees. He has a PhD from the University of Minnesota, an MBA from the University of Chicago. He has a commerce degree from the U of S and he is now retired professor of accounting. So he really knows his budget information. His career at the University of Saskatchewan in the College of Commerce, now the Edwards School of Business, encompassed teaching, for which he received many awards, research. He co-authored a leading accounting text and authored various articles, and administration. He was the department head for a while. Over four decades, his volunteer activity included several provincial and national professional accounting organizations. Bruce has served on boards of Cheshire Homes of Saskatoon, the Saskatoon Golf and Country Club, and of course, as I mentioned before, he's currently the treasurer for our board of the Saskatoon Council on Aging. So let's give Bruce a, a hand from your home. Can't hear you, but welcome, Bruce. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay, you. Okay, well, good. Uh, thanks, June, for that very nice introduction. And good afternoon to everyone. And uh, welcome. And thank you for joining us in this uh, uh, SCOA seminar. Uh, today, I'm going to start with a PowerPoint presentation that I hope will help us establish a common framework about budgeting. So I'm just going to try to load that right now. Oops. There we go. Um, I'm not, uh, I, I know we can't ask questions of the audience in a Zoom presentation very easily. And I often do this when I'm making a presentation, but today I thought I'd just start by raising some questions and have the audience think about what their answer might be. And then I'll kind of give an answer, which might not be the same as the audience's answer, but we can not worry about that. And, um, it helps us then establish this framework that I want to get in, in, in front of us all. So the first question, should one care about budgeting? Well, to establish a perspective on this, let me ask you a different kind of question. Do we care about our physical health? Well, I imagine the audience's answer is going to be yes, we do. And we do lots of things to monitor and assess and maintain and improve our physical health. 
main, uh, uh, probably June has talked about um, many of the programs that school offers and, and, and often they deal with improving our physical health. Uh, another way to think about it is, do we care about our mental health? Yes, and we do lots of things to monitor, assess, maintain, and improve our health. Um, indeed, I think we just came off a week de devoted to uh, mental health uh, uh, in, in information. Now, the next question. Whoops, there we go. Do we care about our financial health? Well, I don't know if you've ever been asked that. But generally, I think uh, maybe the audience would say yes. But we're not sure about our objectives because objectives can be different. And, and what do we do to monitor and assess and maintain and improve our financial health? One of the answers is one of, uh, one of the components of doing this is budgeting. And that's the topic for today. So this, I think, is a, a really kind of important question. How many in the audience do budgeting? Hmm. Um, if the census that just came out asked you, um, do you do budgeting in your household? How many would say yes? I have no idea, but I imagine some would and some wouldn't. So to start with then, I think I, I try to establish that we take care of our physical health and our mental health because we believe it will improve our lives. The same goes for caring for our financial health. We want to do it in so order to improve our lives. Okay, well, that's our kind of introduction. What about the balance of our presentation today? It goes like this. I'm gonna talk about some of the basics of budgeting, what it is, components of budgeting, uh, you've probably heard of different kinds of budgets. There's the government budgets, the federal budget, the provincial budget. Um, you've heard maybe businesses and charitable organizations have budgets. Uh, SCOA has a budget. Most uh, charitable organizations do have a budget. And then we have personal budgets. And I just want to make it clear that today I'm going to address this notion of personal budgets. That's budgets for uh, the use by an individual, or ahead of a family unit, um, that's our focus. The other types of budgets really have different questions and different ways, uh, although they do use the same kind of a framework. So what do we think about budgeting? Why do we do it? Why do we not do it? How do we do it? Then let's do it. I'm gonna give a really good example later on. I hope it's a good example. And then we'll have discussions and questions and comments uh, if we have lots of time. Okay, what is budgeting? First thing, budgeting is opposed to a budget, but budgeting is a process. It's a series of steps. And the first step in that uh, process is we want to identify a particular future period of time and specify what we think our resources for cash or sources for cash will be and what our uses for cash, for, for cash will be. Now, this is your budget. So that's the document, the budget that we prepare to plan. Uh, you see in brackets here, there's some other words. Um, these are used interchangeably, and I probably am guilty of using them interchangeably also. But for uh, when I say sources of cash, other people say our income, our inflows, our revenues. Um, and uh, in terms of uses of cash, we'll use the term expenses and outflows. Uh, we're really, in my sense, in my understanding, generally talking about the same thing, sources of cash and uses of cash, where we're talking about personal budgeting. So we get our budget, and that's, that's a pretty difficult step. But in the continuation of the process, as time passes, we try to keep track of our actual sources and uses of cash. After time has passed, we make a comparison of the total, actual versus the total plan. Look at the differences. We call them variances. We ask, why is there a difference? Is it reasonable? That is, can we understand why it's occurring or not? We, know, we don't know why it's like that. And if it's not reasonable or understandable, what, if anything, can we do about it? 
So that's the, the, the process. And then we, once we've gone through the process, we go to the next period of time and prepare a budget for the next time period. So that's the process. And I guess the distinction I'd make then, a budget is the first step in the process, but in budgeting, we have to carry on other steps. Okay. What do we think about personal budgeting? Well, here we have a little cartoon I picked up. Ask, the, the, the fellow is asking, why do we bother to budget? And well, the answer is so we can plan and worry before we spend any money as well as afterwards. I would say that's not a very positive viewpoint about budgeting. Uh, I don't think these people would necessarily say that budgeting is something that will improve our lives. Okay, what else could I find when I did a little bit of searching? I found this uh, quotation in the uh, Consumer Agency of Canada's financial uh, report. It says, a couple was hesitant about using a budget since they have never used one before as there was always extra money left at the end of the month. They grocery shop together and anything that is purchased is talked about. A lower husband has a tendency to just buy what he wants. I read that and it rang a bell in my mind. That's what I do, I think. What's funny is that many people budget this way, even though it really isn't budgeting at all. I might argue with that. It's kind of a budgeting, but for a very short period of time, that's when you go shopping. You probably have a list and generally what it's gonna cost you. Um, how many of you come home and say, did I buy anything more? Did I buy anything less? Did it pay the price? That's a form of budgeting. Well, I wouldn't be that harsh to say that really not budgeting. But let's move on. Let's make it more personal to you. Why would you not do personal budgeting? Think about that one for a moment. Can you come up with a reason why I would not do personal budgeting? So record it in your mind. Let me ask June, do you have any ideas on why you would not do a personal budgeting? I, the only thing I can think of is maybe it would take too much time. Okay. Well, like I said, we uh, gives everybody a chance to, to think about it. Here's some answers that are possible. Holy smokes, you're right on top of the turf. It takes too much time. You'd rather spend it doing something else. It's a fair observation. Other people, I'm not a numbers person and I know a budget involves numbers and I just don't crunch numbers. My finances, my finances are fine and I do not need to know more. I do not like being limited in what I can do. People see the budgeting as limiting. Or I feel failure, I fear failure. Uh, it's a very powerful behavioral motivation behavioral motivational device, it's fearing of failure um, in, in the sense that people don't do things because they think they'll fail at it. All of those apply and all of those are legitimate reasons. But let's turn it around for a minute and go say, why would you do personal budget? Why would you engage in that type of activity? Again, I'll ask the audience, just maybe to think about a question or a, an answer or two uh, that they might have. Uh, and uh, record it, and I'm, we'll ask June again, why would you do personal budgeting? The reason I think of is if you're wanting to save for something particular in the future, you would want to, to budget to see where you might be overspending, and then you could save money in those areas. Absolutely, and I think that was a, is a common type of thing. Just to have the audience look at some other possible reasons, not necessarily all of them. Here's some that I was able to identify. People say, I want to know what my money is spent on. Uh, I think we think we do know what our money is spent on. I'm gonna show you a, a budget later that I did for myself. And I was kind of surprised, although I thought I knew what it was spent on, I wasn't totally correct on that. Uh, I often spent money on things I didn't know I spent money on uh, or the amount was different than I spent on. So that's just a bit of information that comes about. That helps us in our personal spending habits. 
well, I have enough to take a trip to visit the grandkids and to buy a car to do something else. Exactly. Now, this one I think is important. Can I incur unknown major expenses, a medical expense, a home expense, an expense for caregiving? Maybe I had unknown expenses because of a fraud or a theft. A car uh, had to be repaired and it was a very expensive thing. Or what if I incurred unknown major losses of income? A partner passes. A retirement fund suffers a great market loss. Can I incur those without major financial turmoil? Our budgeting process will help us answer that. It won't give us all the answers, but it will help. Another reason I'm, am I spending more or less on items than I should be? That of course means we should know what we should be spending on items. The budget I'm gonna show you later helps us in that regard. If things get difficult, what might I do to improve my financial health? And finally, am I able to keep up with inflation? Now, how many of us go to a store and we buy something and it really seems expensive to us? I do, I'm, I'm older, I appreciate I'm older and see things differently maybe than, than other people, but I go buy a loaf of bread, for example, I remember when it cost 50 cents a loaf. Now, now what's it, 2.75 a loaf? Uh, that's a, an example of inflation and other things they're having, like we see that now in terms of lumber, going up tremendously. Um, the worry is our sources of cash probably aren't increasing as much as we see the costs of things. So can we keep up? That would be a good thing to investigate. Okay, the point I've had so far is that individuals do different things for different reasons. Uh, this is true with budgeting too. Some people do no budgeting at all. Uh, they don't know how to, or they just don't think they need to. I think most of us fall in this middle category. We do some formal determinations, but maybe not as elaborate as we might think it should be. You know, I know I look at my bank accounts and see, did it go up or down in a month? Uh, is it uh, going about the way I thought it was? Did I spend the money on what I thought I spent it on? That's a form of budgeting, I think. Now, the last area, though, is some are very intense. Some people are rigorously planning on their sources and uses of cash. All of them, I guess, are appropriate responses. So let's go on an illustration of budgeting. We talked about income as sources of cash, expenses uh, as uses of cash. I will not plan on talking about this little rock in the middle. Um, that is, I would call it, that, that's our buffer. That's our savings account or our balance in our bank account or emergency funds. Because we can see what happens if, if expenses are higher than our um, income, then this goes down. And if the other way around, which is possible, the income is higher than our expenses, this could go up a little. So although we do keep track of that in our minds, I'm not gonna talk much about that in this presentation. Okay, let's do the budgeting. What will be our time frame of interest? And I'm just going to say, let's, let's make it an annual plan based on monthly amounts. That's a common type of a, of a thing. Now, then what we do is, is make a plan about our sources and our uses of cash during that period of time. I think a, a couple of hints here. It helps if we initially establish categories for the sources and uses. And I get a couple of examples here for, for uses, for example, housing expenses would be a major category, lots of expenses in that regard. Medical expenses, we might have some for transportation expenses. Obviously food expenses is another major category. So I think we start off by thinking that when we're making up a budget, major categories. After that, let's think about the various items that go into each one of these categories. You know, for example, we could say housing expenses, what goes in there? Uh, property taxes, heat, light, water, maintenance types of expenses are items that go in there. Now, in terms of establishing categories and items that go into categories, we can do this on our own. We could sit down with a piece of paper and write it up. 
But uh, we could also use a number of free templates that are available on the internet to help us do this. I'm gonna show you one of these in a second. But so far then, if we're doing a budget, we go through the process, we get a time period, we set up categories, and then we set up uh, the items in the categories. The last part is what we have to do is determine the planned amount for each of the items in each of the categories. Um, this is the tough part about budget. This is the one that takes a lot of time, I, I think. Uh, you could again sit down and try to predict what all these expenses are going to be. Uh, guarantee you'd be wrong. Um, because uh, I guess my thought is we do have a lot of information on expenses and incomes, uh, and they're available readily to us. If we look at our bank statements for the past year, or we look at credit card statements for the past year. So that becomes a source of the input for the amounts for items there. Um, the last part of this one is that it's a warning. If we go about and say, this all sounds really good, I can do that. Doing this is very time consuming and may take, make it, may become a very frustrating experience. This is particularly so once you start into the process. But after you've done it once, it becomes much easier and easier as you go along. So that's the um, fundamentals of the, the start of the basics that I wanted to cover. Um, the, the next thing is I promised and was promised in our promotion of the uh, event, the seminar, is to actually do a budget for you. Um, so I'm going to base a budget. I'm going to use a template uh, that is available free of charge. And the, the site here is, is identified. Um, I just went on to the uh, Google search and put in the label uh, personal budgeting or budgeting uh, template uh, or, or just the word budgeting itself. And many uh, links came up to that. And so uh, I looked through a couple and I, I picked this one to use as a basis for our illustration because uh, it helps us a lot in terms of identifying major categories and major items in each of those categories. Uh, so that's where we're going ahead. Uh, I will also, give a bit of a warning here, uh, those that are watching, uh, there's gonna be a fair amount of information provided here in details. Uh, don't pay attention to the detail. It's just an illustration that I want you to focus on, see what I'm doing, see what's happening, uh, because the details you can get bogged down in the details and get lost in those, don't do that. Uh, I would say just uh, take it easy, have drink your coffee while we're doing this. Okay, I have to switch over to another set of files here. I think that's this one. Here we go. Okay, this is that uh, budget planner site that I had uh, identified for you in the previous uh, slide. Uh, and it comes up like this. It's, this isn't really the first page that you see, but there's a few uh, uh, descriptors in front of that, but you'll eventually get to this page. Uh, you fill in some things here, uh, you just uh, click on and you can fill in. Um, what you also find is there's drop down boxes. An interesting one here is that what kind of budget would you like to, uh, like to create? And um, we, we can say you get a selection here. Uh, you can select, I'm really in trouble financially and I want some help. That's one basis for the budget preparation. Another one uh, is um, I, I feel quite comfortable in my financial um, levels and uh, I just want to make sure it stays that way. So it helps us a little bit in that regard. Uh, then how many people, if, you know, I did one for my wife and husband, so we, me and there's two there. Okay, all of that stuff you can fill in. What I want to use this front page for is simply to say, this one was good because it gave me categories and items in categories. Started off with income, and then it had all kinds of lists. We don't use all of these things. I mean, you don't have to use and say, I got to plan every one of these. I say, I got a pension. 
So I look at the line of some pension, I'll fill in an amount here, which is uh, going to be a, a monthly amount. Um, there, there's a drop down menu you can see here. It says, uh, is it weekly? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly, et cetera? So you don't have to say all of the items you're going to identify here are going to be monthly. Uh, so it goes on there, and, and you, I think you have to maybe work through it a little bit, but it's quite handy, quite good. But that's then the income, there are sources, and some of the items that go there. Uh, in all of these, uh, there's uh, other categories where you can put in whatever you think is important. And you can add something that's not there that you think is important. Well, in the, um, the, the uses then of our cash, here's a category, housing expenses. And we get uh, seven, some of these, uh, we've got uh, property taxes, uh, we have uh, insurance, electricity bills, gas. They, uh, this is what I mean is this program provided a really good list of items that go into each category. Not that I'm gonna use them all, but I don't have to sit down and think of them anymore. So we could go through this uh, just to say housing, you got other utilities, food and groceries expenses, transportation, um, down to clothing, uh, medical. Medical was interesting because it has a lot of things like eye care, uh, prescription drugs. Uh, these are the ones that maybe not be covered by your uh, insurance plan. Over-the-counter drugs, um, you got your life insurance and all these kinds of things that we might not have thought to put into a medical category. Uh, then we go down to, here's, here's one here in terms of our personal expenses. Kind of like this one. Um, it's got eating out, um, you've got alcohol, uh, babysitting, travel, vacation, so all the kinds of things we might do that and lead to our enjoyable life. Uh, and eventually then we get down to the end and uh, we've covered the categories. So out of that, I think we've covered the notion of a time period for our budgeting, a notion of categories for our budgeting, and a notion of what items go into our categories. Then we get down to the last major part, which is what about the amounts for each of the items in the categories? Well, that's where I suggest we do have some information that's let me try to point that out i said one source of good information about our uses and sources of cash is in our bank statement so what i have here uh, just to illustrate i took a page from my bank statement uh and uh this is for a fairly recent period and i just looked at it you can see a city of saskatoon there's a mutual insurance expense and cost or cables cost. Well, we go down through this on this, oh, there's my income, uh, our sources uh, from uh, Raymond James, the Reliance Comfort, okay, uh, SaskTel. Well, I looked at these things. When I first looked at them, I said, yeah, I, I kind of knew they existed, but what exactly are they for? And I didn't really, feel comfortable that I knew exactly what each one of these was for or several others on other pages. So I would suggest if you're using this approach, you might take a look at your bank statement and do something like this. I have to, here's the same page, except now I've taken the liberty of, of identifying exactly what I paid the city for in this, this item. Here's my property tax. Now, I just want to you know when I do this at the side, I'm also establishing items that are going to go into that budget as a general item. And this is an amount for that item. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, the mutual insurance, that was car insurance. I, it could have been any kind of insurance, I guess, but that was for my cars. Um, the Shaw cable system, well, I have uh, an internet cable system and I have a satellite cable system, both with Shaw, so I didn't know which one it was for. This was for my Wi-Fi. And we'll find out later that the, when I get done, finish the budget, they're going to talk to me about that. Here's an interesting one that I'm trying to show you as I go through this, I do make some judgments about what I'm going to carry for. Here was a, a system generated interest of 50. 40 cents 
in one month. My reaction to that is I'm going to admit that for now. If I had 1240 census over the year, I'd have six dollars. And that's not going to make a pile of difference to me. So I would say take a take liberty. Don't mess around with too much detail there. So I say here's my uh, pension sources. The Reliance Comfort, that was a uh, contract for the furnace we have. Uh, the SAS tell, my concern here was what was it exactly for? Because we had a landline at both a Saskatoon and a lake location. And so it was $138 for both. They're both on the same bill. Uh, uh, I, I would note in this period of time, there was another one for $142. So I mentioned that because I'm going to show you $280 later. Then we would see on our bank statement a, a check. We probably might not know what this is for. We might keep track of it in our bank account, but the, usually the banks will let you know what that's for by clicking on that source. I knew that was for a garage roof, and this one was for a life insurance policy. Uh, th this was a biggie. Uh, the, the bill for MasterCard, that, that this, you notice this was right around Christmas where you spent a lot of money and uh, so this was a large one. I don't know what that was for. I know it was for a bunch of things, but I can't say it was it for groceries, was it for presents, was it for health goods? Or, and so I'm going to treat anything that I paid for a credit card uh, uh, bill separately. We'll see that in a minute. Okay, so I've gone through this. Uh, what I did, I say this is why it's time consuming and a bit frustrating. And now I am in a position to say, here is each month that I went through. And for example, in the January 21st bill, here's the amounts that I just showed you. Under Saskatoon property taxes, car insurance, house furnace. Here was the roof. Uh, and here is the headings I use. We're just identifying the major reasons for those expenses or those costs. Now I did go over to the side. Um, there is um, one here for insurance. That's the insurance one. And here was the for the garage one. I, I put these in red because I'm going to say later when I look at this in more detail, those aren't regular kinds of things. So I'm going to not treat them as monthly. Uh, oh, here's one down here. The um, $200 I spent for SCOA Zoomer tickets. I brought that to your attention because the Zoomer Grand Old Opry style is scheduled to go this September. So keep it in mind, that's a great event. Uh, and uh, just uh, buy yourself a ticket and, and June will tell us all about that, I'm sure in future uh, in, in information to you. A little plug there, June. Okay, so what have I done? Out of all that work and all that frustration, it's, it's frustrating to figure those things out. I am now prepared to get an average per month. And these are the things I wanted to have in order to go into that worksheet. So uh, with regard to um, the house in Lake Saskatel, I spent $1,666 on the, in the year. Divide by 12, I get 139 per month, roughly. Okay, and that's what all these averages are showing me. Here's a couple that I did not figure out averages for mostly because they are not monthly costs. Uh, I could say uh, this, well, June got me on this one. She said I pay far too much for golfing. I don't agree with her on that, but she picked that out right away. Anyway, there are, these ones I'm gonna treat separately when I get down to the budgeting process. So I've got now done my analysis of my bank accounts, um, got the, categories and the items in categories and uh, an amount per month you know what has and not what happens now the next step is said look at your credit cards i did that here was my worksheet for my credit cards it wasn't that bad to make up actually once we got the format uh, from the um, bank statements let me make it a little bit bigger there. Okay, so basically I did the same thing. I, I looked at each credit card and I identified what they were for in terms of the categories and items like gas and eating out and 
uh, booze and, and hair styles and maybe grocery shopping. The one thing that I would mention is here, the, the, the Costco charge is one charge. And uh, you, see, you get a Costco charge and, and you have to sit down and look at the bills to figure out how much was on groceries or how much was on the house or how much was for uh, non-insured medical care. I did that. But again, you work through this, it's tedious actually, because once you get the categories, you kind of know them and, and you don't have to figure them out much anymore. But anyway, here we have then uh, the totals for the year for each of those. And then I want to get the monthly average. So that's what I have calculated here. I uh, take the grocery, for example. The groceries were the Costco purchases for groceries. Then there was uh, 1991. I could look at up there and I say, these were other groceries I purchased at places other than Costco and, and so forth. So I got these monthly amounts or these total for the year and I divided them by 12 to get the monthly average. That's the numbers that I want to put into the budget system. Okay. All of that work through the bank statements, through the credit cards, led me to this summary page, which is the summary of all the expenses on my bank account and the credit card by item. And now I have a monthly total. But I also said some of those things weren't monthly totals, and I've listed them here. You know, property taxes for the lake, they're annually, um, like the golf fee one. Uh, donations, raffles, car licenses, only a couple of them once in a while. Uh, so anyway, that now I, this page actually was necessary to prepare for in order to get to the final stage in our budget. This is the spreadsheet we talked about earlier, only now I've put all the numbers in. Um, here we say, I don't know if we can see that. It says, my uh, financials are okay right now, but I want to make sure they stay that way. That was the purpose that I wanted to draw this, this budget, as opposed to the purpose I'm, I'm seriously in difficulty. Okay, so again, one, we just take those numbers and put them into these cells. Some of them are monthly, some of them are annually. What this particular spreadsheet does is take a total and, and then gets it in a monthly amount. So they actually divided this one by 12 and then added it to the monthly ones to get $5,373 that I spent, or I have as income for the month. Um, and ag again, uh, without uh, the detail, you can understand, I think that I got all that information. Now I'm just putting it into the appropriate cells. Um, what I want to do is go down to the end now. Okay, so here it, it tells me that um, my monthly total expenses are about 4,389. Uh, and based on that, I had a surplus of income that is sources over the expenses of about a thousand dollars a month twelve thousand dollars in total for the year okay i know that's wrong because i haven't put some things in here for example i didn't do any of the items that are on my visa mastercard uh, i did not put in anything here in terms of what i expected what i would like to use to go on a trip to sacramento to see the grandkids there was a provision in the but in the uh, the a spreadsheet that I could have done that, but I didn't. I just wanted to see after I cover my basic operating expenses, what was left over. That's my, that, that's kind of nice to have a positive number there. And then the lower that number is, the more difficulty and more seriously we have to treat the budgeting process. Now, the other thing this program does is it says it looked over your budgets, your budget, and here's some things you might think about. I should allocate some money for clothing. I didn't, that's, that's right. Um, mostly because I put all my clothing into the, the Costco purchases. That's where I buy my clothes mostly. 
Although I do go to other, some other places. So I, what about put some in for debt payments? Well, I, I could have, but I don't have many debt payments right now at my age. Um, I could have put something in for saving categories. And that's what I'm thinking of this extra left over. It could be saving. It could be something else, too. I just didn't allocate it that way. So there's some thoughts, uh, some, some thoughts there. Uh, here's one. Uh, I should find a cheaper cable package or consider scaling it back. Uh, yeah, I, I do complain about the cost of my cable service, but there's not a heck of a lot of competition around. Now, other things, uh, get a cheaper internet package, like, same idea. Um, and I like my cable and I like my internet, so I, I'm not going to cut that back. Um, here we go. Oh, this was one I think is relevant. Uh, we both have cell phones, so we also need a landline. So if we were seriously in sort of a position where we needed to start saving money, that would be a good suggestion. Uh, here's the one I didn't particularly care for. You should reduce what you spend on lottery gaming. Uh, well, I suppose that's possible. I don't spend that much money on lottery gaming, but anyway. Now, the other thing that it does, we go over here, it gives me a breakdown. Here's what I'm spending on food in my plan. And here's what they say, a total, per, a total budget for a two person unit, you know, only probably on average spends about $500. And this is based on Statistics Canada numbers. So it says that uh, we are spending more than, than average. Uh, Okay, that's, that's, I like to eat. The other thing it does, I'm just going to go up here, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, way up here. There we go. Here's a graph that they provide. Once you finish your budget, it says how your budget compares to suggested guidelines. So the, the light shade of the green here is a range of what they suggest for um, housing expenses. The dark line is where I fit. That's my percentage of my budget that I spend on housing. Yeah, okay, I, I it's at the high side. It's certainly not uh, unreasonable. Other utilities, they killed me on this one. This was my cell phone, my internet, and all that kind of thing. And, I spend way much more than what they think should be the range. Food expenses, well, they kind of criticized me at the bottom with that chart I showed you, but here it's not that much out of the range. Transportation, yeah, a lot of people in, in general are way up here in their range for well, where I'm way down here. And that's because I don't travel much. I don't drive very much anymore. I'm retired. You know. Way. That's one of the benefits, I guess, cutting costs. Medical, I'm way up here. Okay, yeah, I am because of dental plans and I don't have a insurance coverage but I, other than Blue Cross. Um, personal expenses, this is where, again, I tried to show June this one and my golfing was in there and it's fine, it's reasonable, it's right in the green area, so that's fine. Anyway, that's the kind of thing that this program does for you. Know what it doesn't do. It ends there. And if, if it doesn't do the third, fourth, and fifth steps of budgeting, it doesn't give you the opportunity to track what you have actual spent or compare it to your plan. So there's a wind up here. Uh, do we have time to? I guess so. A minute. This only takes a second. This is a different format that I think is useful. And if um, Anyone is uh, on the school board or has been on the school board can be familiar with a framework like this. Chris, could you slide this it over a little bit? Yeah, I would like to. I don't know how. There we go. Better? Yeah. I got little pictures up there and I can't get rid of them. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
what this is, all the work I did in the previous analysis about categories and, and items and amounts for items is still here. I still have to do that. But what I've done is listed them with only the things that are relevant to me. So I take the housing and I took that, all the things that incur, I incur uh, a use of cash for. And I also, this is different than the previous one because I now base it on annual amounts. And you can probably see this one is a lot e easier to understand once we've gone through that process. Uh, so I, this is my budget really for uses of cash. A lot of things there, but that's what we had before. But this one now allows me to go to the next step and actually keep track and uh, analyze what I, have, what I have spent and compare it to my plan. So this one just says, okay, I went in and got all the mon money that I spent on the first three months of the year, January, February, March. How did I do that? The same way I did it uh, in terms of de demonstrating, look at my bank account, look at my credit card. Now, the items here then uh, are rough and, and got to admit they're probably not accurate, but they're reasonable, I think, to give me some information. The next thing I said I want to do in my process is to, after I've traced some of the actual amounts, compared it to the budget amounts, look at variances, look at differences. How do I do that here? Well, my guiding rule is I'm 25% through the year. So if I take a percentage of the amount I've spent for 25% of the year over the total, this is what I get. And it's not too bad in terms of my guidance of 25%. I don't see a lot of variances here. Uh, the gas at Saskatoon and the lake, it's 34, maybe because I use more in the winter time. Uh, here is uh, way down because the maintenance is not done in the winter time around my place done in the summertime and uh, insurance I haven't paid it yet okay so I'm not worried about these variances they're totally explainable um, other utilities well let's look just for a second here here's Maryland cell phone 36 percent I thought it should be about 25 percent what do I do I don't know why it's like that so what I go I go ask Maryland and she comes up and tells me, well, she did a little bit extra on her phone that month, and that's okay. And now it's all under control, and now I'll just keep watching it in terms of trying to explain any future variances. So that's the notion of um, looking at the actual versus the plan, looking at variances uh, all the way down. I always like to go to the bottom. So here's my total amount that I've spent so far out of my total budget. 23% roughly. Oh, that's pretty good. It's, it's not like 40%, not like 5%. So it's within an acceptable range. And I've looked at each one of these items and I know what the explanation is. So my last slide here is um, putting the sources and the uses together. Here we have then, uh, if I can move this over. The sources, we had my uh, pension plan, OIS and Canada pension plan and Maryland's pen, uh, pension plan, all perfect, exactly what I expected. Uh, I then looked down the total sources and the total uses. This was from the previous uh, document. And 27, 20, so I'm, I'm saying, okay, that's pretty good. So as I said, all of my intention today was to kind of give you a, a notion of what budgeting are, what the process is, give you an example, say that if you fool around with it, different people do different things in different ways. Some do it elaborately, some do it not so elaborately. Um, am I okay for time now, Jim? We're done. Well, Bruce, thank you so much. And if anybody has any questions, if you want to pop them in the chat feature, we have some time to answer them. And if we run out of time, what we can do is you can email myself at june at scoa.ca 
and I will forward the questions to Bruce and he can get back to you. I have a question, Bruce, just regarding mm -hmm. the template program that you used. I'm interested in using that link. If you could send me the link to that, I can share it with everybody that's um, on the webinar today in case they want to use the same budget. Sure. And we do have a question that. here. It's from Diana and she said, my husband likes to take an amount of cash out each month. He will have to keep his receipts or this makes it difficult to track, doesn't it? So she's asking, should we keep all the receipts in order to track the budget? If I think the, the idea here, as I understand, is that when they spend money, they spend cash. So it's not going to be necessarily in their bank account or in their credit card. And if that's the case, then yes, to account for that cash, it's like you have $1,000 you take out every month uh, and you want to keep track of what the expense on. And if it's all paid, we use cash to pay for it all the time, then yes, you should use, look at your receipts and identify what the items were spent for. I hope that was the question. Um, she's saying it would just be a debit amount from his account. Yes. And I'm, I'm going further and say that would be like a credit card. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be like uh, I have in my bank account a big charge for my Costco bill in that year. But I had to go and look at the items for the uh, that particular uh, Costco bill. Uh, and I had to use receipts or I had to use the, the MasterCard statement to do that. So if, if you want to keep track of what, the, say, the amount that is taken out of, in cash, um, then you, yes, you would have to track the invoices. I have another uh, question. Is it best to save each month then for something that's an annual expense? Or is that hard to do? <laughs> uh, if you know about it, then uh, I think in, in the budgeting process, you just have a notion you're going to spend it. And so you have to look at your flows. What, what I recommend in that situation is sometimes you have to look at a monthly budget and a monthly cash balance so that you have to plan that you're going to have after you've covered your expenses, oh, you got your sources and your expenses up to say April. And, and then you say, I've got this much left over. And I'm going to put that, it's going to be used for my uh, vacation or whatever. Uh, in the budgeting process, what I think was identified is if you do it annually, you say part of my uses is going to be a vacation, for example. And it's in my budget. And if I put that into my budget and I say, yeah, I still gonna have, I've got enough money to do that, then you, sh you should probably make sure you got enough to start with. Like I'm talking probably about that rock. Uh, and some months you spend more than you get in and some months you spend less. And so that rock is your cushion. Uh, I th I, so that's a good question. Uh, I, my, my thought is, Doing the budgeting and, and watching your cash balance in your bank um, alerts you to whether you should be saving or not for that particular item. Okay. I have another question from Joanna, and she wants to know what about a fund to pay for income tax on income? Yes. Uh, what that budget spreadsheet did is it says you should report record your amounts net of income tax. I didn't point that out when we went through it, but all those income sources were net of income tax. Uh, what, uh, I, the, the question I guess was, should we um, plan for income taxes? Yes, that should be part of our, our expenditure. When they say use net of income tax amounts in your uh, sources, 
think they're almost assuming that those amounts are after you've had tax deducted uh, at that at, at the source and um, and so you wouldn't have i mean if they're paid already you wouldn't have to save for them in that regard okay. uh, that's not always the situation so if you don't have them deducted at the source yes you would have to include them in your plans and i have a couple of comments here from janet she says thanks bruce so easy to understand as always mm -hmm. and uh, beth has says thank you for the presentation I have another lady, Joy, she wants a paste to the link for the budget plan into the chat or on the screen again, please. I could probably find that, yeah. Um, Joy, if you don't mind, what I'll do is I will email the link out to everybody that participated today because I have all your emails, if that's okay. That sounds good and I will send it to you immediately after. Sure. Any more questions, anyone? Well, we're just a few minutes early, but... Um, Jude, I just wanna say, I wanna thank you and Cynthia for really helping out and organizing this presentation. And uh, the audience may not know it, but um, I'm not very good at Zoom and they were just tremendously in helping me out. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Bruce. Um, Diana says, thank you. Great presentation. Elliot says, I'm hoping this talk will be posted on the SCOA website. And yes, this, Elliot, it, it is recorded. So the webinar will go up on our YouTube channel, which is uh, listed on the SCOA website. Or you can go into YouTube and just type Saskatoon Council on Aging and our channel will come up. All our webinars where we're allowed to record are on that. So Bruce, I really wanted to thank you as well today for this presentation. As a volunteer, I know you put an awful lot of work and effort into giving us this great information today and just taking time out of your, your life to do this for us, it's awesome. So if everybody wants to keep checking our website, we have upcoming coffee break, sessions, presentations, workshops, all sorts of things. It's right on the main page. There's a box that says register and you click that and you can scroll down. Our annual general meeting is coming up on May the 27th. And we also have a fundraiser that you might be interested in, which is uh, again on that registration page of our website. And it's a cheers to 30 years fundraiser and it's a wine and cheese virtual wine and cheese event and there'll be some trivia and I think it's going to be something fun to do so you will get a couple of little bottles of wine and some cheese and some fruits delivered to your home and then you would log in through zoom so once this ends just stay online for a moment and when the webinar closes there'll be two or three questions that come up on an automatic survey. It's anonymous, so feel free to really give us your feedback. We like to hear that so that we can continue doing the great work that we do or, you know, improve upon what we're doing. And also, you know, there's an opportunity there for you to let us know what types of webinars you want to have in the future. So I think it's 2.30 now. I think the everything is going to end so get out there and enjoy the sunshine today it's a pretty nice day out yep. bye goodbye